son Mike Kelly, we extend our heartfelt sympathies. We wish him well as he chooses to continue now in the same business venture as was his father's. Jim Kelly, you have served us well on this earth. We now commend your spirit to our Father in heaven. May your soul and the souls of all the faithful departed through the mercy of God rest in peace. Amen. You know, I hate to say this, but I think Jim would be sort of disappointed in us not having a good old-fashioned Irish wake for him. Maybe so. Because the other fellows are all on the road, and you couldn't expect them all to be here anyway. No, I suppose not. Just the same, I don't see why those bigwigs from Midtown Terminal couldn't have showed up. Those low-down skunks of sons of... What's the matter, buddy? It's eating you. Nothing, except your father did such a... Damn good job of serving a terminal. They think a basket of flowers can make up for it. What do you mean? Make up for what? Nothing. Just forget it. Come on, let's go, huh? I'll hit the road and fit this big gas pedal to the way. If I don't leave, I'll be late. And I've got to get this load on up the road Well, I just got back from Philly And I think it's kind of silly Are they sending me back up to Baltimore? They make them slim in Richmond And it might be hard for this one To make it to the Mason-Dixon line I'm just a foot fashion Gear jamming Trucker named Kelly Moving my big rig along the line I'm just a butt smashing, gear jamming, trucker named Kelly Somewhere up the road I'll meet the sweet loving warm love Sweet and brunette, just like you. Wake up and she'll feel the pillow for me. He'll look 
at the clock that's on the stand. She'll rub the sleep from her eyes like a child just... Hi there. Hi. The name's Kelly, ma'am, Mike Kelly. You know, say, uh, for a little old gal, you sure can't handle those wheels you're driving. Ah, uh, you, um, must be the driver of that truck, hmm? Yep. Mind if I join you? What if I say no? Well, being the gentleman I am, I might question that a bit. In a nice way, you understand. Okay. On one condition. Name it. Please don't call me a little old gal. Okay. I can buy that. <laughs> what should I call you then? My name's Karen. Fine, Karen. You got a deal. You can call me Mike. Oh, oh, old man. Cool. Excuse me a minute, Karen. Hey, now, take it easy. He didn't mean anything by it. Everybody's entitled to one mistake, eh? Okay, stud, he made his, you made yours. I don't put your nerves in my business again. Wouldn't you know it? No sooner do I meet a good-looking chick like you and some bum comes along and makes me look like a redneck truck driver. I don't know. I think that was very gallant of you, saving an old man from a beating like that. Ah, uh, now you're making fun of me. No. But I am curious about something. What's that? You just don't strike me like a, a typical truck driver. Is trucking a, a sideline or a hobby with you? Well, I probably could have been teaching in some high school or another one day, but... Uh... My old man had an accident, I had to drop out of college. But uh, I got my own rig now, and if I make enough money, maybe I can get back on the intellectual grind someday. See? I knew there was something different about you. Hmm. It's a pity we have to call it off so soon. Call it off? What do you mean? We're just getting to know each other. Sorry, I've got to be going. Well, was it something I said? Uh, at least let me impress you with my knowledge of some of the better eating spots in this area. You know, Kelly? I could probably learn to like you in due time. Well, hold on now. At least let me walk you to your car. Okay, old timer. Come on, old fella, get up here. That's fine. That's fine. That's fine. Well, wise guy. Now, you've made your one mistake. How'd you like to try that on me? Okay, Steph. I think I'll just do it. Hey! She didn't have to cut out so soon. Uh, I think I'd better. The cops should be arriving any minute now after that little um, get-together inside. Hey, I think you'd want to be getting out of here yourself. Yeah, you got a point there. I'm sorry about that. It's okay. You restored my faith in chivalry. But I was uh, sure hoping we'd get to know each other just a little bit better. Uh, you know, that thought crossed my mind too, Callie. But that's the way it goes. Well, hey, uh, where can I look you up? Who knows? If you're a good little boy, maybe I'll look you up. So long, Kelly.
Really? What the hell are you doing here? Well, didn't you say you wanted to get better acquainted? Yeah, but... Come on, why don't you open the door and let a fella in? Oh, no. I know what you've got on your mind. You're not getting in here. Nah, no, come on. Quit acting like a kid and let me in. Not until hell freezes over. I've heard about you truck drivers and your women. Free information, I'm no truck stop woman, you hear? And I'm gonna call the manager if you don't get the hell out of here. And I mean it. Well, you leaving, Kelly? Kelly, damn it, I know you're out there. Kelly? give us truck drivers a bad reputation. Now, actually, though, you know, Karen, we're not like that at all. You aren't? No, ma'am, no, ma'am. We're actually a very, very considerate and, and gentle and, and compassionate and, and soft-spoken and subtle. Subtle? Yeah. Like this. Hey, Karen, when you get to Springdale, I got a couple of friends I'd like you to meet. Sorry to disappoint you, Kelly, but uh, I may not be going to Springdale. What do you mean you might not be going? Can't just skip out of my life like that. You know what your trouble is, Kelly. You got your ego in the wrong place. Now, hold on just a minute. Sorry, but I gotta be going. Hey, Karen! You're not going to drive off like this without telling me who you are. No, I'm going to drive off and leave you like this! <laughs> you know, George, I thought I saw a streaker. Oh, yes, ball. Yeah? Yes, sir, Mr. Fontaine. Right. Sure. Yeah, I just sent a load to them this morning. They ought to get it in a couple of days. Why are they coming down here? Sure. It's all right with me. Fine, sir. J just give me a call and I'll come right out. Say, old man. You always carry that poot waddle on all your runs with you? Sure, it keeps me from getting lonely at night. Well, why don't you just show us what you do on all your busy nights? Okay, I'll sing you a song. Remember Home on the Range? Nice song. Oh, make me a gome, uh, throw me a bone. Uh, I'm just digging home. I'll start again. <clears throat> oh, give me a home with a ruffalo bone, a biffalo bow, a buffalo bill, a bi bow, bi bow, Daniel Boone, Daniel Boone's daughter, Bab, Baboon. 
<coughs> oh, give me a home with a buffalo roam and a deer and a cantaloupe play. You know, the ants and the deer are over, the cows and the cactus cupboard. You know, and a home, home on the stove, a home, home on the waffle iron, uh, the good wicket, a uh, home, home on the, I lost the rain. I said rain, rain. Home, home on the range where the ants and the deer are low play. They, I'm all mixed up on those animals. See, I, I cross animals. I crossed a, a, a rooster in a racing form. I got a chicken that lays odds. <laughs> and, um, and then about, you know how it is. And, uh, did you hear about the frustrated duck? He couldn't get his down up. <laughs> <laughs> That's my home on the range. Hey, Jensen, will you put this in the cab? Nice. Hey, Ben, how's it going? Oh, about the same. How was your trip? Uh, pretty tiring, but otherwise all right. Say, uh, Diesel Joe, uh, I got some trouble with my electrical system there. You think you can uh, do something for me? Sure. Okay, well, you know where it is. Here, Fred. Hey, what are you still doing here, anyway? I thought by now you'd be loaded and gone. Well, I should be. But let me show you something. Two of Fontaine's drivers got there ahead of me. Same thing as usual. And hell, they just come in last night. Come on, Ben. Frankie, we want to know how the hell Simmons and Andrews got to the top of the list on the trip board. Well, maybe it's their turn out. Ben tells me they just got in last night. Now they're being loaded up to go out again? How long do you think we're going to put up with this crap? Look, Kelly, you're starting to sound like your old man. Now, if you don't like the way we do business around here, why don't you do your hauling somewhere else? You know, Frankie, you might have a pretty good idea there. We just might do that. Come on, Ben. Let's get the hell out of here. That bossy crown, if I didn't need to work, I'd have jammed that tripboard right down his throat. Come on, buddy, now. Take it easy. Relax. Yeah, I know, I know, but every time I talk to that jerk, he gets my bowels into an uproar. Oh, now, just take it easy. You'll live longer. Oh, all right, all right. Hey, how's about going to the club for dinner tonight, huh? I can stand <laughs> a change of scenery. Yeah, well, that's the best offer I've had today. But first, I want to go down again and take a look at my dad's truck. Well, look, Mike, you know, I, I feel the same way that you do, but... Do you think you should be go down there every time you get back into town? I just can't help it. I gotta find out what caused that accident. I know that if I just keep on nosing around, I'll find out. All right. Okay, I'll see you later, huh? Okay, buddy. How'd I go? Well, not too good. I really didn't know what I was looking for, and yeah, it's pretty much of a mess down there. But I still don't believe my dad's death was an accident, so he was just too smart for that. By the way, listen, when I got back from college, you uh, started talking to me about Frankie and my old man, and we never really got around to it. And Jim had got on to it. That's why he wanted to get out and take the independence with him. You think that stuff is still going through here? All I can say is there's a lot of Fontaine's trucks that are going out to unknown destinations. Well, what do you think we ought to do about it? Well, Mike, that's, that's sort of up to you. You see, uh, all the boys really looked up to your father, and they would have done anything for him. And I think you're the only one that can pick up where he left off. Are you telling me that these truckers would jump at the chance to start a whole new terminal of their own? Yeah, sure, I believe they would. Okay. Well, if you think these guys will listen, you can get them all together and I'll talk to them. That is, if they will listen to a newcomer like myself. They'll listen, all right. They're all pretty fed up with the treatment they're getting from Jake Fontaine. 
pretty fed up. And, and oh, there's one more thing I want to say about uh, Diesel Joe. Yeah, what's that? Uh, he may be a good mechanic, but I wouldn't let him put his cotton picking fingers on any part of my rig. Why not? What's up? Uh, nothing now. But Diesel Joe did all the repair work on your father's truck. In fact, the night before the accident, he had it in the shop. And I think... No, he... no, Ben, I think you're working overtime a little bit too much. See you at the meeting. Something funny going on out here, boss. That Kelly kid and Ben Turner having some kind of meeting. All the independent drivers are here. Tell you what you do. You call a couple of the other boys and have them meet me down there as soon as possible. Okay, boss. All right, now we all know we're not going to get any fair deals from Fontaine and Frankie. And there are a lot of other things going on down there at that terminal that I don't think any of you fellows want anything to do with. So, now my old man came up with a plan explaining what to do, and he had it printed up. Now I think we ought to go along with what Jim said and set up our own terminal. Now that way, we're all going to get a fair deal. All right. Now the thing is that probably what's going to happen is we're going to have to put in a couple extra bucks to get this thing off the ground. But if any of you guys are interested in this thing, come on up here, sign this log, get a copy hey, of this info yeah, sheet. Come on, come on up, Bob. Everybody, let's go, everybody okay, in there. Sam, great. Get a copy of this. Take a look. Good, Roger. I understand you and the other boys are having a little meeting. So what? You wouldn't be trying to start some more trouble for us like your old man did now, would you? You know, Frankie, I'm glad you brought that up. I've been meaning to ask you, where were you the night my old man got killed? Now, what's that supposed to mean? It means I never have thought my old man's death was an accident. You know, Kelly, if I were you, I don't believe I'd be saying things I couldn't prove. And one word of advice for you, Frankie. You better hope the day never comes when I can prove it. Yeah. Good. the warehouse on the phone. Never mind, I'll do it. Frankie, Jake Fontaine here. Yeah. What did you find out about last night? Oh, 
that again. Who's got them all riled up this time? Kelly's boy, huh? Well, if it gets too loud, you're going to have to do something about him. Good. Good. By the way, you know you have to be over here at noon. Those syndicate people are going to be here from upstate for a meeting. And Frankie, bring me a copy of that information Kelly's circulating. Seems to be the trouble, officer. Routine spot check. You carrying any cargo? Sure am. Just got loaded an hour ago. I'll have to ask you to step down. Let me see your weight bill and the operator's license, please. Okay. Make it fast, though, will you? you got a long way to ride. Lieutenant, this looks like the one. Well, Mr. Kelly, I'm afraid I'm going to have to put you under arrest and take you down to headquarters. Headquarters? What for? Mr. Kelly, you're carrying stolen goods. You're crazy. Mm -hmm. I would like at this time to inform you of your constitutional rights. You have the right to remain silent. McDonald. Already? Yeah, what'd you get? Good. Yeah. Who was the driver? Where was he out of? What do you mean, Jim Kelly's boy? Hell, that can't be right. Uh, something's not copacetic. You booked him yet? Well, don't. He's been set up. Yeah, where you got him? Okay. Hello, Kelly. Hello, Lieutenant. Would you mind telling me why your people dragged me down here? You had a chance to call your attorney yet? Attorney? I never needed an attorney before, and I don't need one now. Yeah, suit yourself. But you were caught hauling stolen goods. Ah, oh, don't give me that bullshit, Lieutenant. You know me better than that. Maybe. But what was that stuff doing on your truck? How the hell do I know? I don't load the damn thing. All right, Kelly. All right, calm down now. How do you think that freight got on your truck? How do I? Well, I'll tell you, Lieutenant. I think a, a colony of little ants had nothing to do in their spare time, so they, they kind of just had a conference and sneaked... Okay, Kelly. Okay. That's the way you want it. I'm going to tell it to you just like it is. Now, look. You may not know it, but you could be in a lot of trouble. Now, both you and I know that somebody set you up. But it don't matter a damn what you and I think. It's what the court thinks. Hell, don't you have any pull around here, Lieutenant? Can't you fix it? It's not that simple. They caught you hauling illegal freight. For all they know, you put it on there. Like hell I did. Okay, Kelly. Maybe I can help you. But you're going to have to help me. Meaning what? Simple. I'll go to bat for you. If you'll do some undercover work for me. Oh, no, no. You got people that you pay to be informers. That's not my bag. Okay, Kelly. I hope you know a damn good lawyer, because you're going to need him. Book Mike Kelly. Hold on, Lieutenant. Change your mind already? Well, let's just say I'm willing to consider it. What's the deal? 
Kelly, for a long time now, we've been suspecting that stolen goods are being transported through Midtown Terminal. But suspecting and proving are two different things. Well, how do I fit in? Well, Kelly, what we need to know is when that warehouse is full of hijacked freight, and if possible, where it came from and where it's going. Look, Lieutenant, if they're doing what you say, then they're not going to let me just uh, sneak in there and start nosing around. Besides, Ben Turner and myself are trying to organize the independence to start our own terminal. Now, what am I supposed to tell Ben? You're a bright boy. You ought to be able to figure out something. No, Kelly, what we've talked about goes no further in this room, understand? Thanks, Lieutenant. Now, how the hell do I get out of here? Oh, I'm going to go down and get the judge to set bond for you. And before the case comes up, I'll have the charges dropped. That is, if you cooperate. Okay, okay. Can I go now? Yeah, you can go. Oh, well, Kelly. Hmm? Keep your pants zipped. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Uh, so, uh, Frankie is with Fontaine out there? Well, what is Fontaine's address? Ah, uh, come on now, sugar. You owe me a little favor now, remember? Uh, well, of course it's in the Ritchie district. Where else? Yeah, that's it. Uh-huh. Right, thanks, doll. Uh, no, not tonight, sweetheart. I've got a long, real long run to make. And I, I won't be back for a couple, maybe three days. But i tell you what I will do. As soon as I get back, I'll give you a call and we'll have one of our swinging times. <laughs> You're a doll. Yeah, well, listen, honey. I really appreciate this. Bye-bye. Hey, take care of it. Uh, like I was saying, Mr. Fontaine, I hated to lose their freight, but that was the only way to take care of that Kelly bum. You think it'll work, huh? I'll almost stake my life on it, Mr. Fontaine. Almost? Uh, that's just an expression. my lawn before I call the cops. Why, well, you old goat. If it weren't for your age, I'd belt you one. On second thought. Bravo! Bravo! I see you've taken to beating up old men yourself now, Kelly. What the hell are you doing here? You just can't believe it, can you? You mean you and him? Mm-hmm. My daddy. Now I get it. Wouldn't tell me your last name, huh? Thought I wouldn't have anything to do with you if I knew. You wouldn't dare. Kelly, put me down! Like father, like daughter. Kelly! I'm warning you, Jake. Next time you try to set me up, you won't get off so easy. What the hell is going on around here? 
I thought you told me you're taking care of him. I thought I had, Mr. Fontaine. I don't understand how he got out so soon. Well, you better quit fooling around and do something about him before he gets in some more trouble. And in the meantime, if I was you, I wouldn't let him come back to the terminal either. Look, Mr. Fontaine, if we try to keep Kelly out, we're only looking for trouble from the other drivers. The only thing I know how to do now is to let him have an accident, just like his old man. Okay, but make sure you don't botch up the job this time. No wonder you... You guys ain't getting any good stuff. You let these punks push you around. That had happened up north. <laughs> You'd be wearing some men overshoes now. Doesn't happen that often. Yeah, enough of that. The boss wants us to tell you. He ain't happy with the cheap goods you've been sending up there. We need better stuff. And more of it. Look at the chassis. Classic chassis. I sure would like to finance that. <laughs> Buster, you couldn't finance the front or rear bumper on this chassis. Get on back to your table. Which guy? New men on the route. My girls tell me they got a couple of truckloads of color TV sets. How long they been here? At least half an hour, I suppose. Get rid of them. She tells me that she loves me, not for return. Silence. Come on, Dante. Come on. 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 As that stuff's transferred, put that truck in the river. Take the real road out of here and Smokey won't see you. But keep your CBs turned on and don't leave any tracks around here. Yeah, yeah, boss. Just call me, sweetheart. Mike Kelly. Maggie! <laughs> Mike, you look more like yourself than the last time I saw you. Yeah, you look a hundred times better. <laughs> you coming or going? No, I'm just getting back in. Got loaded by half hour. <laughs> From the looks of you, I'd say you could use something stronger than coffee. Maybe. What do you got in mind? <laughs> Come on.
something bothering you, Kelly? You don't seem like your old self. No. It's nothing. Am I boring you? Would you rather I just left? No, it's not you. It's personal. Is she that important to you? Yeah. How'd you know it was a she? We women know these things. Hmm. You want to talk it over? No, I don't think so. Listen, Kelly. If I cared about someone, I cared that much, it'd take a lot to keep me from him. Go after her. It gets real lonely out there. I got your note, Lieutenant. That's obvious. What the hell took you so long? You shacked up somewhere? Oh, Lieutenant. Come on, let's get going. What the hell's a big idea going out to Jake Fontaine yesterday morning? What are you getting at, Lieutenant? Oh, come on, Kelly. Damn it, don't play dumb with me. I know you went out there yesterday and beat up on Fontaine and three of his men. He even threw his daughter in the pool. What the hell are you trying to do? Queer the whole deal? Oh, uh, I was personal. Personal? Look, I don't give a damn what you call it, but you're no good to me unless you're hauling freight out of Midtown Terminal. Well, then I'm no good to you anymore. Because I don't haul out of Midtown anymore. The hell you don't. We got a deal. You're going right back in there and behave yourself just like always. You understand? You really mean that, don't you? Damn right I do. You want those charges dropped? Man, when you got a guy with a hairy short, you sure know how to put the squeeze on him. Joe, uh, you putting a kibosh on some poor trucker's rig? Listen, the way you monkeys tool these things down the road, you think they'd last forever. I'm just checking, that's all. Want to be sure you know the difference between a solenoid and a Ferguson striker. What? The, the Ferguson striker, where it's attached to the batten valve down there. Yeah, sure. See, I, I knew you knew your business. You damn betcha. And the best they got around here. Our old man Fontaine would have got somebody better a long time ago. That's right, Diesel Joe. You're the best. But I want you to know those guys really appreciate you. Too bad old Jim Kelly isn't around anymore to appreciate you, too. Yeah. Uh, that's what we guys were saying the other night. Too bad about old Jim. Uh, no, he was the best friend I ever had in the business. And I was wondering, you, since you're such a whiz on these machines, you might figure out what caused his accident? I don't know nothing. What are you trying to say? Oh, uh, well, Mike's been going down to the wreck almost every day, and it just dawned on me that you're the only one that ever worked on Jim's truck. 
I hear you've been throwing an awful lot of money around lately, Joe. Don't you go accusing me of nothing. I ain't had nothing to do with Jim Kelly's accident. I never said you did, but you sure got awful nervous all of a sudden. You best get out of here, old man, before I bust your skull. Okay, I'm going, I'm going. But if I was you, I'd get me some good answers of what I was doing on the old man's truck the day of the accident. Welcome, ladies and gentlemen, to the Flaming Pit. I'm Alan Mitch Miller, and I'll be your host for the entire evening. And right now, for your listening and dancing pleasure, how about a nice big hand for Peggy Linville and the Castaway? <laughs> just isn't like Diesel Joe to go into a rage and threaten me like he did. Mike, the more I think about it, the more I think that he had something to do with Jim's accident or knows an awful lot about it. Well, now that you got him shook up, it might be a good time for me to talk to him. If he knows anything, I might be able to get it out of him now. Say, um, how you doing signing up those drivers who weren't at the meeting the other night? Not bad at all. Signed up four more, and that puts us over the 20 mark. Say, that's great. That many, it shouldn't be long before we'll be in business for ourselves. And then we'll show Fontaine how a legitimate operation should be run. Yeah, even if we go broke trying, huh? <laughs> Say, I have to get up real early for a run tomorrow, and us old-timers need our beauty seat. <laughs> All night, that is. <laughs> See you later, huh? All right, old buddy. Hello, Mr. Kelly. How'd you like to buy a girl a drink to make up for um, throwing her in the pool? Well, I might, but I really don't know you, do I, lady? Oh, come on, Mike, don't be sore. Look, I don't know what's wrong between you and Jake, but believe me, I've had nothing to do with it. Honest, it's not my fault. Mind if I sit down? Suit yourself. If you're telling the truth, why didn't you want me to know who you were? Well, maybe I didn't know if I ever wanted to see you again or not. Then what are you doing here? Damn it, Mike, you can't blame me for something I don't know anything about. If you want to act like a jackass, be one. So long. Karen, come on, wait a minute. What do you want? Move over. The hell I will. What do you want? I said move over. Now what? Now we'll go get that drink you said I promised you. Never let it be said that Mike Kelly ever refused an offer from a lady. 
I'm afraid you're a little late this time. What do you mean? Haven't you heard? I can't go anywhere without Daddy's watchdogs following me. I'm afraid he won't be too happy when he finds out I've been out with you tonight, Kelly. Now that's just too bad. <laughs> got an apartment at 331 Ridgeway. Now, nothing's got to happen to the old man's daughter, understand? All right. Well, now, ma'am, here's that little drink I owe you. Hmm. I'll tell you what, after a ride like that, I sure could use one. You know, Kelly, I just can't figure you out. Well, why keep trying to figure me out? Why not just admit you're crazy about me? Uh-oh, here comes that ego again. I think I'm the crazy one, Kelly. I think I'm falling in love with you.
Well, a good, good morning to you. <laughs> Do you mind? I have to take the lady where she wants to go. Gee, I guess I forgot to say please. See, you have no manners. <laughs> please. Please! to you. Where the hell have you been all night? What are you asking me for? That's what you pay your watchdogs for, isn't it? Don't get smart with me. 
You were out with Kelly all night, weren't you? Sure, I was out with him. So what? I told you not to have anything to do with him. Daddy, you've told me how to dress, where to go to school, what to eat almost all my life. Now you're going to tell me who I can go out with? You're damn right. And no daughter of mine is associating with a, a truck driving clod. You know, Daddy, I'm beginning to believe some of the things that Kelly and the other fellows have been saying about you. You really want to control everything and everybody around you, no matter what, don't you? Karen, don't you get smart with me! <laughs> Karen, you come back here! I'm not through with you yet! Sure, I'm sorry. It's just that I was worried about you when you didn't come home all night. And then the boys told me that you were out with Kelly. Naturally, it upset me. I lost my temper, I guess. You know how much I love you, and I'm really sorry. Oh, Daddy. I wish I could believe that. You're all I've got. Can't you understand why I want to protect you? Protect me? All you're trying to do is control me. You got it all wrong, baby. As a matter of fact, when you get down to it, I really don't have that much against Kelly. He's just a stubborn young man who doesn't know his way around life yet. So as long as you're going to keep seeing him, why don't you try and get him to see things our way? I don't know, Daddy. I just don't know. Look, baby, I've got to go down to the terminal for a while. Why don't you rest and think about what I said, and we'll talk about it later. Maybe. Frankie, I want to talk to you inside. I want to know what you're doing about that hot-headed Mike Kelly. Well, I haven't had a chance to do anything about him yet, Mr. Fontaine. Well, you better take care of him immediately. Why? Is something wrong? Is he bothering you again? He's not only interfering in my business, now he's in my private life, and I want him stopped! Permanently? Permanently. All right, Mr. Fontaine, I'll take care of him today. Good. In the meantime, what I wanted to talk to you over the phone was, those two syndicate men are going to be here tonight with the payoff for last month's shipments. I want you to make sure it's right, and bring it to me as soon as they leave. Yes, sir, Mr. Fontaine. Tell Diesel Joe to come to see me. <laughs> Come on, 
baby. Fix me another drink. <laughs> Come on. Come on. How are you? What can I do for you, Mac? Say, uh, name's Kelly. Uh, I got my rig down the road a little ways, and uh, it's got some stripped-out fittings and some damaged cylinders. Uh, think you might be able to do something for me? No. Been working on this here rig for three days. Got one been sitting over there for two. Mm -hmm. Looks like I'm going to be tied up for a while. Sorry about that, Mac. Uh, do you think uh, somebody else around here might be able to help me? No. Uh, don't rightly think so. Say, uh, is that pickup over there yours? No. Matter of fact, I hadn't thought of that. Some, uh, some guy named Joe drove it in a little while ago. He said he was some kind of mechanic. I didn't happen to say his name was Diesel Joe, did he? Yeah. Joe Diesel. Something like that. Where'd he go? Last time I saw him, he got a bottle out of his truck there and went on inside. Well, thanks, Mac. Don't mention it. Where's Diesel Joe, Buck? Sorry, Kelly, can't help you, I don't know. Now listen, don't give me a hard time. I know he's here, just tell me where he is. Okay, okay, hold on, Kelly. Number two. All right, how long has he been here? Since about noon. Bouncing with the broad. Gee, honey, if I'd known you'd been so handsome, you wouldn't have had to burst the door down. I would have let you in. Get out of here, honey. Split. What the hell? How the hell do you get here? Listen, I'm beginning to put the pieces together. I got a couple of questions, and I think you know the answers. I ain't answering any questions from you. Stop it! He's trying to kill me! Fuck, stop it! Help kill my old man. You mean Jim Kelly? Yeah. Is this thing loaded? Sure, what do you think I do? Hit him in the head with it? One 
more left here. That's enough to blow the top of your head off. Now, who paid you to jimmy my brakes? Listen, don't, don't kill me. Frankie did. Frankie paid me. Did Frankie pay you to kill my old man? No one was supposed to get hurt. He just wanted to scare it. I swear, Kelly, I swear. Don't kill me. Please don't kill me. Please. Get up. Get in that truck. You're going to drive me to town. What about my leg? I That's your leave. problem, man. Get in that truck. All right, all right. Boys, boys, boys. Well, Tandy just called. Tandy called. And Mike Kelly's got the goods on Fontaine. And he's headed now for Midtown Terminal. Are we going to let him go all by himself? All right, follow my rig. Come on. Tell your boss he's got a grade A shipment of refrigerators headed his way. Hmm, that's fine. Don't you want to count the money? We'll even up if we have to make adjustments. Whatever happened to that punk, um, Kelly? Uh, by now he must have had an accident just like his old man. You know what I mean? <laughs>
Yeah, I guess so. Look, you'll find all those stolen and TV sets in Section E back there. I guess that should wrap it up for you. Yeah, except for one pleasant chore. Things will be different now that Karen's the new boss and you'll be in charge of the office. All the drivers, even Fontaine's, will get a fair shake now. Yeah, but you know it should be you and Karen up there running the terminal instead of me. Ah, <laughs> no. You know me, I got too many places to go and things to see before I settle down to a desk job. Well, we got these wheels rolling. Uh, where is Karen, by the way? She said she'd be right back. She had an errand to run. Well, tell her I'll see her when I get back. Huh? Take it easy now. Okay, you bet. You know that now you're the boss, you can't do things like this. Ah, oh, come on, Kelly. Isn't it okay if the boss checks up on the drivers once in a while? Hey, what are you stopping here for? We've got a long ride ahead. I know it. Okay, let's get moving. I'm pushed. This early in the day? I can always muster up enough strength for an emergency. This is no emergency. I wouldn't be if you hadn't sneaked on board, sexy. Now, Kelly, you're not getting any silly ideas, are you? I can feel something developing. That ego again? Well, I wouldn't object if you'd want to step out a minute, excuse yourself, freshen up a little bit, put on some of that sweet smelling stuff for me. Okay, let me go. I'll be right back. Don't get started without me. Who, me? And miss all the fun and games?
smashing, gear jamming, trucker named Kelly. Somewhere up the road I'll meet that sweet, loving, warm, hugging, soft-kissing woman I call my.